I'm here at Friendly Farms in Sacramento, California today where we're going to do a wash with the Sambo Prefiltration Mescalatore. We're going to be asking our operators lots of questions. Stay tuned. So the typical setup, like you have two two tanks, two jacketed tanks in the back, and so that's the typical setup when you're going to make bubble hash, where you're going to have tanks that are going to chill the water, and you would use the chilled water. Okay. For the mezclatore. Okay. Their chiller is down right now, but this is the type of setup that you would have. You would pre-chill the water, which this is more is efficient water than storage. for water storage. So this would be full of RO water or whatever clean water that you're going to use. Here, let's do this. I want to, I think that it'll work out here to go live. And I think this sure. is cool. This is really good information. All right, so we're going to come back to going inside of the really, really, really cold room. Um, but right now, I'm with Charles Sambo Creek Filtration. He's recording me as I record him, because that's how we roll over here. Um, but he's actually telling me about the water storage right now uh, at Friendly so okay so typically okay go ahead charles tell me your stuff oh but by the way just really quick and i'm going to talk about this again in a separate post but the the loudness of the pumps moving the water there's normally a muffler that comes on those so that it dampens the sound and it's not so high-pitched clappy um but what is necessary and needed is an air dryer on your compressor and i know a lot of labs mostly have those this lab does not have one and um, so in that case it's going to create a situation with freezing on the pump and so the mufflers were taken off to mitigate that um, but that's why it was loud as hell okay so over here <laughs> so the chilling in the pump the most efficient way to um use chilled water is by having a jacketed tank like these here right you would put your water in here and then you have a chiller to chill that water. Yep. And that's more energy efficient than creating ice and using ice uh, to this chill your water. This stores a lot of water. Yeah, this stores a lot of water. And here oh, they use true. RO water, which again, that's on a case by case basis. That's personal preference. But the point being, this is the type of setup that you'd be looking for where you would chill your water in a jacketed tank and use it when you're going to wash. So it instead can of using ice, eliminate the use. For, yeah, it can stop the use for ice. Right? Yeah, you don't need ice, and it, this would be more energy efficient than manufacturing ice. Oh, what were we talking about earlier about RO water? That it can break oh, so, down. Well, so water is a solvent, right? And so water is the universal solvent for all the solventless people out there, but it's fine. So the analogy that I like to use is like, how much salt can you put in water? You can fit less salt in a cup that is cold versus one that is hot. Yes. Similarly, when you use reverse osmosis water, you're stripping out anything that that water had. And so that just makes that water more likely to strip certain things from the plant. Yes. And in this case, more than likely, we don't want to strip those terpenes or whatever it is you're stripping from the plant simply because it is an extra opportunity for contaminant. Okay. So RO water. RO water, of course, because it, it contains nothing. Like you would not drink RO water, yeah. right? It'll it'll just like strip the salts from your body pretty much, right? Okay. I mean those sort of situations. Just because of the omniotic pressure. Not everybody and the, knows that. And yeah, that's good. That's very and, true. And so we do use it to make hash, but there is a reason for it, but then there's also a negative side to it. I mean, if you can drink the water, you can make hash with it. Most of the hash makers that I've spoken to are happy enough just running it through carbon adsorption. And the carbon will, will eliminate any kind of heavy metals. And yet the water still is like soft enough to where, you know, it's not gonna have a, a strong reaction with, with your plant. I'm, I'm trying to use, what were layman's talking, terms here what, what were we talking about yesterday how you were saying the significance is if you are in fact using RO water that you should be recirculating your reusing your water 
per wash and not having that, that's, fresh water every time. That's because, be, because of that, right? Breaking down the plant material. And you're stripping, you're stripping all kinds of contaminants from the plant material that you probably don't want. It's a personal preference. A lot of hash makers will say they want to use fresh water and they have the reasons for it. We have our certain opinions of it. I don't think it's necessary. It wastes a lot of water, but it's also in a case by case basis, depend, depending on what. It's almost like corrosive. Almost, right? Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Up. Okay. Oops. 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 More locking casters or... On the front side? Yeah. There's locking? Yep. Yeah. Did it press down and press on? The very tip? Yep. Yeah. Go for it. And then how do you do it? Do you again. do it back up? No. Nope. Step press? on it again. On this one? Or yep. this one? On the little lip. The top lip. Top. Oh. Little one. Oh yeah, I see it says off. There we go. Alright. Yeah, these are nice and easy. Oh, am I gonna like make water come out of here? Sorry. No, it's close. Oh, okay, great. I see the probe in here. So you can run ethanol through here to clean it? Yes. All right. You can run nitric acid through it. Is it like a... It's plastic. It's almost like melamine. It's you know a melamine? PPH. PPH. What does that stand for? Polypropylene. Food grade polypropylene. PPH. It's made by a little company in Germany called Simona and Bayer. The ice didn't melt. The ice from the flower never melted. Like I mean, like that's the claim to fame. Ball, right? That's the claim to fame. I mean, like trying to express to somebody why you don't need a jacket, how energy efficient it is. You know? Yeah. Until you look at it, until you touch it, it's really hard to relate. Cool. Oh, now, they've got, now they've got room to do stuff. So. <laughs> I was impressed with how easily you could remove the sip plate and then rinse it. Like, and this one's hard. The, this is the least user-friendly version. Okay. We have other systems that are easier to clean, easier to tear apart than this one. Okay, okay. Okay, so this comes out and goes in here. Is this filter right here that's kind of like a... No, that's just a drain, just a oh, hose. Okay, plastic or something? Yeah. Okay, all right. This, it has like a, a model of the machine on it. So, would it show you different things on that machine as it's going? Yeah. I think he just, oh, okay, I was going to say, I think he just, just. Uh, okay, so, but it'll show you. So like when you're running the pump, the pump turns red. When you're running the motor, the motor turns red. And then it'll tell you up here what's going on. Like it says emergency press or this or whatever. Whatever you've got going on, see right here. It tells you that there's a there's a problem with the uh, thermostat. Yeah, because it's not connected. Part. So it, it's telling you all these kinds of things. Gives you all all the info, and then here, what Charles is just saying is when the pump is being used, it turns red. When the what would this be called? An impeller? 
What is it? It's actually a pulsator. A pulsator. Okay. And yeah, that's a technical. Pulsator is in use. It turns red. What is this? That's the pneumatic cabinet. And so that that those are the controls for the diaphragm pump and the pneumatic lift. So you don't touch that unless you Ever. need to modify something, but it comes preset from the factory. Okay. But it just looks so awesome. Yeah, I like that it's clear. It's all electrically controlled pneumatics. And then are these like circuits or something? Yeah. Like fuses or something? Yeah, for the pneumatics. And then does this, um, when this is down, does this show that it's yeah, down? Yeah, it, it shows it coming down. Okay. Well, there's no air. So, oh, yeah, but so we can't, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the picture, the video. Awesome. Very awesome. So now it's down. Very cool. Okay. Hundred and five C. Oh my God! <laughs> You'd wish, right? It's so yeah. cold in here. Yeah. 